Today on Real Ghost Stories Online, it's your Real Ghost Stories. Called in at 855-853-4802. You, by the way, can do that anytime you want, 24-7. 855-853-4802 to share your Real Ghost Stories with us. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your Real Ghost Story now at 855-853-4802. Or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown, and quite possibly, the undead. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. That indeed it is, an 855-853-4802. Like I said, the phone number, call in 24-7. Share your real ghost stories. We'd love to hear them. You can uh, get a commercial-free experience of our program through Apple Podcasts. In addition to that, you get bonus episodes, EPP bonus episodes, extra podcast person episodes, the full archive of episodes, and uh, so many other extras, advanced episodes. Check that out on Apple Podcasts. You can even try it for three days free. Or if you're not on Apple Podcasts, get that same experience over on Patreon, patreon.com slash real ghost stories. Or if you're kicking it old school, like I do a lot of times, uh, ghostpodcast.com directly on the website. You can go there and uh, get that right on your desktop and download the episodes and binge away. Many different options for you. It's uh, Tony and Todd with you on today's episode of the program. What's going on? Did I tell you like a couple of weeks ago about some experience I w- the experiences I was having where I'd be thinking about a certain um, celebrity or listening to their music and then they'd die a couple of days later? No, but I had that. Well, the third time has happened. So you don't, no kidding. Yeah. So several weeks ago, I uh, it was it was a weekend, and uh, you know how you start scrolling through stuff and you hit something and you kind of dive in. Yeah, Les- Leslie Jordan, yeah. Uh, the actor, comedian. Um, I did a deep dive on a Sunday, which I'd never done, and I started watching all these interviews with them about his childhood and all that. I really went in deep on him, and then like a couple of days later, he Dad. died. <laughs> so then I'm, I'm thinking, well, that's just really strange. Yeah. Then like a few weeks later, I'm listening to music one weekend, and I'm listening to Fleetwood Mac, mm-hmm. and I, I I just I say to myself. God, Christine McVie is the best. I start listening to all of her solo stuff. I start looking up interviews of her on some British TV shows. Yeah. I must have spent a good afternoon. A couple of days later, dead. <laughs> You're kind of like the angel of death for uh, I'm celebrities about this. this year. Yeah. So <laughs> Friday night, I'm uh, in my head. And this I know this happens to you every once in a while. Like a TV show theme popped in my head. Uh-huh. Yeah. So then I went into YouTube and I watched every season intro of that TV show because <laughs> back in our day, you'd get a different one every yes. couple of seasons. They'd freshen it up. Growing Pains was a great one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so I, I watched all of these and then I did a deep dive into where are they now and all this kind of stuff. An obscure, obscure TV show. A mm-hmm. couple of days later, Adam Rich from Eight Is Enough, dead. That was an obscure one. Yeah. Yeah. But but again, it happened to me. Why yeah. is this happening? Well, who do you want to die, I guess, is the <laughs> next question. <laughs> Boy, I guess I didn't look at it that way. That is some power. Let's make a little experiment here. Let's, uh, let's call the next one to die and uh, see what happens. Who's been a bad person in life that you really were like, yeah, it's coming towards you? Um. Uh- you know, uh, I've got some people that I'm not a big fan of anymore that I used to be. Maybe I'll deep dive into their stuff. I didn't. I just didn't know if it was premonition kind yeah. of stuff or what was I don't going know. on. Because I think it's no matter what you're looking at. So don't fucking Google me. <laughs> well, that's what I was saying. It's like, you know, I, now I'm afraid to look up anything. Exactly. I, I'd be really curious. Well, another weird uh, coincidence that is is occurring is the Brian Killer uh, thing in as far as like bigger killers of this last year. You have uh, Brian uh, Koberger, well, the alleged killer, Brian Koberger, in the Idaho murders case. Right. Uh, you have uh, the Brian, uh, what's his name, from the Gabby Petito case. Um, and then you have another Brian that was arrested this week uh, from uh, the case of the woman in, I think, New Jersey, where the she was missing. I wanted to dive into this, but I've been so invested in the um, other one in the Idaho murders that I haven't uh, done it. I can find it here in just a second. Uh, the Anna Walsh uh, murder. Oh um, yeah, 
Yeah. Um, he, the, the husband, uh, Brian, I forgot what his last name is, but probably Walsh. Um, he's, um, uh, and he's allegedly, you know, they, they arrested him. It's, you know, and, and I'm not guilty yet, but, um, what I was shocked on that one was just the, the weird smile he had, like as they were arraigning him, like this is, this is off. But he, I, humans are scary, and then you did oh dive God. a little bit deeper into people like that, and it's like, oh, they're just creepy. It is, it is extremely creepy, and I've been doing a lot more with true crime, and I tell you what, that shit's hell of a lot scarier than ghosts, right? <laughs> tons, tons scarier. Um, yeah. Anyway, but that, but anyway, there's three Bryants, uh, like in the last you know year that have been the subject of major murder investigations. Wow. So I don't know. There's, there's a lot of weirdness. Do you believe in things like, um, like numerology and, and things of that nature? I think there's probably something to it. That's just my opinion. Mm -hmm. So yeah. 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 I think there's something to it too. I just don't know what, because it, it, it like sometimes it totally makes, but it's not always there. So I don't know, like, why is it show up in some things to such crazy, weird extents and others, like, not at all? Right. I don't know. Sometimes That's, I wonder if we just miss it because we're not looking for it. And then, you know, yeah. it slaps you in the face five times in a row and then it doesn't for a yeah. while. I mean, that could be it, too. And sometimes you get like, oh, you catch it a lot, uh, a lot later. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at Real Ghost Stories Online to share your real ghost stories with us. Let's go over to a phone call and hear a ghost story. Da, da, da. Okay, let's hear it. Go for it. Hi, um, my name is Precious, and I want to talk about something that happened to me at my dad's house, and I have not spoken to anybody about it, and it's been over 10 years. I was in my late 20s and my father and his wife at the time and her son were going to Disney World it was the day after Christmas and I traveled a lot for work but I was home with him for the holiday and he left um, before he left though uh, he came into the guest bedroom and um, he kissed my forehead and you know, he said, well, go on, Pookie, we, we're, we're leaving. And uh, groggily, you know, I said, okay, bye, Dad, love you, I'll be careful. It was still dark out, really, really early in the morning. And um, I'm not a heavy, heavy sleeper. So I was well aware of the fact that he had come in and told me that they were leaving. And so I lay in the bed and, and he closed the guest uh, bedroom door and he went down the stairs and I had already heard that his wife and stepson had already gone down. And so I heard the garage door close and there's a long driveway on the side of my dad's house. And so as I lay in bed, the bed that I was in, it faced the window in the room and that guest room was on the very front of the house. So I watched the headlights of the car drive down the driveway and they turned right out of the driveway and then I didn't see any more headlights. The only people that lived at that house was my dad, his wife and son. And so they left, I was there and I was just gonna be there, you know, over the break and whatever. And so as I dozed back off to sleep, remember it's still dark outside so early in the morning, I hear the guest bedroom door open and it opens very slowly and I'm, I'm just getting chills thinking about this and I'm laying in the bed and I'm thinking what is going on I'm, I'm wide awake and um, I'm, I don't sleep with the covers over my head but the way that I happen to be laying it was easy for me to just pull them over my face I didn't want to see whatever it was I don't know how I could tell, but I could tell that whomever had opened that door was now walking around the bed. The head of the bed, the headboard was on the same wall 
as the door. And so while laying in the bed, the door to the bedroom was to my right. And the room was big enough for someone to walk entirely around the bed, across the front of it and up the other side. And for some reason I could feel whatever this presence was walking around this bed. And I was very right because I felt someone sit on the bed and whomever it was, was was heavy, was a, a heavy set person because part of their, I would think their leg, their thigh, it touched my, my leg in the bed. The bed went down a lot. And I know this sounds crazy, but I promise you, <laughs> the bed went down i could tell that it was a heavy person and what is odd is i was terrified however i was able to rationalize that whomever this was the gesture of sitting on the side of someone's bed was was not a gesture of um it wasn't threatening i didn't feel threatened i didn't feel like whomever or whatever it was was there to harm me and I think that when you sit on the edge or the side of someone's bed it's kind of conversational you know it's it's that's what your friends do that's what your parents do and I just remember saying out loud like I don't know who you are but like please leave like I can't do that like and I just started to pray and I was like you have to go and they stood up the bed you know got light And they stood up and I could tell they were walking around the bed and to the door and the door swung closed slowly. And I did not come from under those covers until it got light out. And I I got up and I called my dad and I was telling my dad about it and I'm hysterically like throwing things in the bag, you know, I traveled so much for work that I only had a storage unit in a P.O. box. I was in a different city every two weeks at the time. So I didn't have an apartment um, because I was always on the road. So I was, you know, trying to figure out where I was going because I was not staying there. And he asked me to describe again, you know, and I said, I don't know that I didn't see anything, but whoever it was was like a heavy person. And they sat next to me like they wanted to talk to me. And my dad says, that was my mother. My paternal grandmother, she passed um, before I met her. I was alive. I was maybe 15. However, I had not yet moved from New York to Alabama, which is where this took place, which is where I live now. I had not yet moved to Alabama with my father. And so I had not ever met my paternal grandmother. And she definitely was a heavy set woman. And he said he just feels like that was her. She never got a chance to meet me and talk to me. And he feels her and he he doesn't see her in the house. He said he said he would always feel her and know that she was there. And he thinks that that was her. She she just wanted to to come and have a conversation with me. And then that's why she sat on the bed. And when I said, please leave. She, you know, didn't want me to be frightened, but she didn't get the opportunity to get to know me. And that made me feel a little bit better because, you know, his thing was she's just there. She's always going to be watching over you. But I also prayed that same night, like, okay, you know, we didn't meet, but I can't, don't ever do that again. That was the most terrifying thing I've ever experienced ever. And it was so real to me um feeling her leg. i was too scared to even move my leg away from you know her leg i i, I just laid there um i wasn't dozing off like it wasn't sleep paralysis it was nothing like that it was so real to me and so i just wanted to share that um story i have not really spoken about it could be because i live alone still and it's a little spooky but i just happened to find your podcast and um i thought it was very very fitting so Thanks so much. I I always enjoy the show and I wish you guys um, the best of luck. Thank you. I appreciate you uh, sharing that story. It's an interesting thought too of 
Uh, once you're gone, can you go and visit and, and get to meet your your relatives or what would be loved ones if you were alive still and uh, freak the shit out of them? Uh, and but get, to, <laughs> but get to know them at the same time? I like the fact that she said, don't ever do yeah. that again, right? I know. Yeah. But she made a couple of mistakes. Number one, when people say, you're going to think I'm crazy, I will say this. Eight times out of 10, I don't think people are crazy when they tell me their stories. Uh, and the other thing she did wrong, never have your bed on the same wall as the door. You have got to be able to see out the door at all times. Just have, having grow, grown up and being scared of being in, in bed and all that. Yeah. You got to have the bed set up across the room from the door so you can see out, maybe at an angle so you can see out and down the hall, but never on the same wall. That's a that's a big mistake. I would agree there. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I, I, I've had that before. And you know what? When I that's an interesting observation because when I look back on childhood, the only times I really kind of had nightmares and was kind of freaked out of my room was within the years that I, my bed was on the same wall as the door. Yeah. That's you got to be able to visually see that, and, and if you can see outside a little bit, you're even better off. But man, I mean that that. Even to this day, I don't think I've ever set up in my bedroom with with it on the wall of the door because anybody could walk in and you just have no you'd have no inkling that it was happening. Yeah, they just come up right behind you. Yeah, are, are you the same way when like you go to a restaurant or something? Like how some like like a lot of cops are like this too, where it's like they have to be facing the door and they don't want their back to the entry point. When I go out investigating paranormal, I do not like to be out in the open with nothing behind me. Um, some people think that's a great way to have some sort of communication. I love to have my back against the wall mm -hmm. and be able to see everything. That makes me a lot happier. Interesting. Oh, well, I get it's a it's like a state of mind, it's like a peaceful or like a thing, right? I mean, it, it just, right. just knowing you're in a safe place and that you can react without being snuck up on basically. Yeah, you've got some control of the situation. Yeah, of a fairly uncontrollable situation. Interesting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh 855-853-4802 is our phone number. Let's go to another call. Hi. Hi, Tony. My name is Vanessa. I called a couple of weeks ago. Um I have quite more stories that have happened to me and my family and uh you know, I've been seeing that you've been posting, you know, open minds. So I'm like, you know what? I think it's time because <laughs> I haven't really talked to much people about this other than my husband, but he's not really into it. He thinks it's not real or he's a skeptic. He really doesn't believe in this thing, but things have definitely happened to him. Um, one story is that uh, when he was probably 15, 16, he was a teenager, um, his, him and his parents, uh, his mother, especially his mother, she uh, used to always go to this psychic so she can tell um, her her future. And I guess that she got really curious one day and she decided that she wanted to know about my husband. And she, I don't know if she opened something as soon as she uh, kind of introduced you know, the idea of knowing his her son's life or future. So um, my husband has never experienced anything creepy other than this, like, from then uh, to that age. So um, I guess she came home one day after that, and um, my husband told, tells me he felt so weird that day for some reason. Um, right after the morning, after him, his mom dropped him off school, and he just felt so odd the whole day. He went home, um, and at the time, he didn't know his mother had did a reading on him. So he went. Sleep. Uh, he said it was really late and he was sleeping and he was really, really tired because he had football practice and all that. And he said in the middle of the night, and this is, I was so creeped out when he told me this because I've seen things, I've experienced things, but I've never had anything like this happen to me. Um, and knowing how tough he is. I, I was like, oh, my God, did, did it really creep you out? It creeped him up so much 
that he will not talk about it again. He told me that the story one time and he never spoke about it again. And he hates talking about it. When I tell my sisters, when I tell like my friends and stuff, he hates talking about this. <laughs> but he was laying in bed and he was sleeping. And in the middle of the night, he said he started feeling really, really, really hot. And he, uh, he wasn't having a nightmare. He was literally just sleeping, he said. He doesn't remember any nightmare or anything. Out of nowhere, Tim, everybody was sleeping and he got pulled out of his bed. He got yanked out of his bed and he just fell on the floor and his, everybody in his whole house, his whole house was so, so creepy. Um, and everybody heard this big thud and everybody ran and trying to figure out what happened. And my, my husband said that he woke up screaming because he got yanked out of bed and he has no idea. He wasn't dreaming of anything. He didn't see anything. He, it was plain dark and he just got yanked out of bed. His mom finally came in the room and they saw him laying on the floor because they used to all sleep with the door open. And she saw him in his room laying on the floor and asked him, like, are you okay? What happened? Why are you on the floor? He told her that he got yanked out of bed and the whole thing, he's been feeling really weird and he, he was really scared. Um, and his mom was like, did you see anything? Uh, were you having a nightmare? Maybe you were having a nightmare and you, you fell out of bed. Maybe you walked off. And he was like, no, no nightmare. I was just sleeping and I felt hot all of a sudden. And then I felt like somebody grabbed my leg and pulled on me and yanked me off bed. My husband was pulled off bed so hard that he hurt himself, like um, his leg and his head. And he said he was in so much pain. And then a couple of days later, you know, like that was it. He, you know, he didn't really think much of it. And a couple of days later, his mom told him, you know, that day that that happened to you, I had went to my psychic medium and she had told me that uh, things about you because I wanted to know your future and I wanted to know if you were going to be OK. And he was like, why would you do that? Because um, he doesn't like any of that stuff. He doesn't get near it. Uh, so he was pretty upset with her. And he said that. She probably opened something or touched something that she shouldn't have had. And I do believe in that because um, I know that once you introduce yourself to things like that, you open doors. So I think that she opened a door for him. And that's what happens, I think. <laughs> but if anybody has ever experienced anything like that, it would be really interesting to hear. Uh, like I said, I have more stories. Um, thank you. I love your show. You're amazing. And your stories and your podcast was incredible. Thank you so much. Have a great night. Thank you uh, for all of that. I think there was a door that was opened uh, in the middle of that phone call. Because <laughs> my computer started flipping out. I, I've never had to do that. I was just sitting here and I have two monitors and... All of a sudden, like, they start flashing back and forth. I'm like, what the hell's going on? The call was still playing, though. And then it started kind of breaking up, as you could hear. Uh, then it the computer all went to the odd monitor, the one that is not, like, the main monitor. And then I tried to get it to flip back. And then it started doing the weird thing again. And then I got it flipped back, and it turned the sound card off. I don't know. That was weird. I don't know. There's something in that story I didn't want, want to be told about or what, but it was weird. It was either that or is it a Windows machine? Because that'll that'll say everything we got to say. Just being Windows itself, yes, is pretty <laughs> much uh, pretty much what. But you know what? I have tried. I have tried. I've tried to go to Mac. I can't do it. I can't freaking do it. I it's it. it I don't know. There, there's so many things that with Windows I just know how to do. Uh, and then with that, there's just so many things. It's like retraining your brain to so many different things that you've had ingrained for the past. 30 years um i don't know I, I have a i have a macbook i have a great macbook pro I have like a, the fucking maxed out one that's and i use it for video editing 
that's it. Um, I couldn't make the full switch though. You? I had a Mac a while and I used to have uh, uh, Apple products and stuff. And mm -hmm. I just, mm, as much as I like the phone and stuff like that, I could never make the switch. And a lot of the software we use in radio yeah. uh, doesn't work on Mac anyway. So you yeah. kind of, you know, and, and I'm just too old for it. Um, I, I wonder, you know, I've never heard, it's kind of weird when you go to a psychic and, and mm -hmm. I do believe that some psychics are very, very good. And I think some psychics are not very good. Yeah. Uh, and some are just, you know, flakes and false. Sure. Um, but I think when you do do that, there's some sort of communication going on there, uh, between the psychic and the world or the universe or whatever. Mm -hmm. I could see something like that possibly happening that wouldn't surprise me i glad to hear that he's okay after that and i would think getting pulled out of bed would be hella scary yeah i uh i think i'd be very freaked out by that i was uh listening to have you ever watched mind hunter on uh, no. netflix um no. there, there's a book out that the the series was based on um and it's it's a true crime type thing where it's about the investigators into uh, like Ed Kemper and um, you name it. There's a whole, the horrible mass murders of basically the 60s and 70s. It's how they kind of got to the uh, psychological uh, evaluations of these people and started using that into science uh, and, and crime solving. Uh, but how they got there, understanding the profiles and psychological uh, psychology of people. They also, uh, and, and I know that they still do at times, used uh, psychics. Yeah. And, and one of the officers talks about uh, he came in uh, to some case and said, here's what I believe the profile of your killer is, like down to a really good uh, detail. And they said, are you psychic? He goes, no, why? What are you talking about? He's like, well, the psychic we had in here like last week said almost the exact same thing you just did. Wow. So it, it it's, and, and, and evaluating psychology and, and like kind of the makeup of a person not really psychic to me it's just like you connect some dots and more times than not you know things point in certain directions on individuals right. um but is that a lot of i mean is that what some psychic is some psychics are doing where it's like i feel it's this or that it's really more of a i don't know is like a subconscious deductive reasoning could be and i think you know, I think we all have intuition and I think some people with really good intuition are able to fake it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I do truly feel that there are there are, you know, some people out there who call themselves psychic who are actually very, very good. Yeah. And, and yeah, there are stories of psychics coming in and helping, you know, help solve cases that had gone cold for quite some time. Yeah. I I mean, I believe there are some that that are, are doing more than deductive reasoning. Uh, somewhere they're like literally just pulling information out that <laughs> right like names that like that's not deductive reasoning that's like that's coming from somewhere or something it's just what is that is that someone that's trying to communicate from the other side is it some sort of imprint or stamp just on energy and time i guess that's the million dollar question of what exactly is it that's that's giving that message to those people right but, yeah always uh always very interesting all right, that's going to wrap up today's episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you like the show, get yourself a commercial-free experience. Get advanced episodes of the show. Get bonus episodes of the show. You can do it through Apple Podcasts right now on our channel there. Just sign up. You can try it for three days free or patreon.com slash real ghost stories or on our website at ghostpodcast.com. Until next time, for Todd, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to Real Ghost Stories Online.